Hey everyone, it's Lexi. So in today's video, I'll be doing a vlog style type of video where I am kind of vlogging my experience reading the Brown Sisters trilogy by Talia Hibbert. So this is like a cult favorite here on booktube and I've always heard really great things about this, this series in particular. So I was really like a little bit hesitant to pick it up because despite hearing all these great things, I'm not really a romance type of reader like it's not really a genre that I venture and, and you know try out so this is very much stepping outside my comfort zone but nevertheless I was still really excited to pick up this series and see if it lives up to the hype so this is again there will be spoilers throughout this entire video because I will be discussing some of the things that happened in this book but I thought this would be fun to do because all the books in this trilogy are out so I could just marathon through them and you know you will hear my thoughts and opinions re in like you know real time so I'm really excited to do this video so we'll see if I become a you know fan of the romance genre. Alrighty everyone so I am 54 pages into Get a Life Chloe Brown. I apologize the birds are singing this morning but so far I'm really liking this. I like the writing style like it's very like it's very witty and like very conversational and kind of almost stream of consciousness which I like and I also really love the main character Chloe. I think it's important that we have like a character um, that is in chronic pain and just kind of getting that kind of perspective in it I think is really good so um, I do have chronic pain myself. I have nerve damage so I kind of know at what she's kind of experiencing which I really like like I really like how that's kind of done in a very kind of respectful way that can be broadcasted to an audience that kind of helps people kind of understand it a little better so I think that's really good and even just like the banter between <laughs> Chloe and Red I really enjoy and especially the scenes when all the sisters are together I think are a lot of fun too it kind of reminds me of me and my siblings I have a sister and a brother and just our different dynamics I think are a lot of fun and I can really relate to like a character who kind of has like a list of things they want to kind of do in their life. I feel like everyone kind of has something like that so I really like how she kind of had that near-death experience that you know led her to you know be like you know what my I need to like actually like do something with my life and do these fun things so I really like it so far I love the bantering I love the characters so far it's been a really good ride alrighty I'm on page 138 chapter 9 and I am flying through this book I love it I just got through the part where Chloe was on the bike with Red and she wants him to help her with her list and there was like a back and forth of email chains and I love their banter I think like that's like one of my things I love most about kind of like rom-com genres like even when Harry met Sally I like I love their banter and so I'm really loving this so far I'm really loving these characters and I really just want them to admit what they feel about each other but I know that's like the build-up so oh my goodness I am obsessed I usually don't read these type of books but I am loving this and I feel like I could finish this tomorrow if I wanted to like I'm just flying through it like I've read like almost 140 pages today like I am obsessed so so far this is going so good I really love Chloe and her kind of unique personality and all of that stuff so I'm really loving it so far and that email exchange in chapter 8 was just chef's kiss Alrighty, I've been making my way through so this is my second day two um, yesterday I read a total of 216 pages and I started reading like later in the afternoon but I like flew through it. I really love the character banter I think is my favorite part like just kind of that banter back and forth I thought is really I thought is has been really well done. Um, my only thing is is that I'm kind of at the scene when they kind of go out for kind of her drunken night out which is on her list and they're kind of you know doing some inappropriate things outside and I felt that was a little bit of a weird turn of events because I feel like it's been very 
cutesy so far and I feel like I'm reading like a Sarah J Mass book just minus like the growls and the you know alpha male stuff so it's a little bit that part is a little bit of a contrast especially when you were reading from Red's perspective too when he's been kind of dealing with his own thing I feel like they're like kind of very two different books because it's told very differently from like Chloe's point of view so I feel like it's like PG-13 with Chloe and then it's like R-rated when Brett's involved so I feel like it kind of is not a good balance between the two a little bit but I still find it really enjoyable and like another thing too is you know the author does make a point saying how sarcastic Chloe is and I feel like they're trying to like tell us this when it's clearly in the you know her dialogue that it is so that's like another complaint but this book is very addictive I've been enjoying it I think right now it's like a solid four star read when I was talking about some of my complaints you know with kind of the unbalance between like PG-13 and R rating um but yeah so far so good like I said I read two over 200 pages yesterday and I didn't even read for the majority of the day so I definitely can like finish this today like I'm just speed like flying through it so so far so good alrighty guys so yesterday I ended up finishing get a life and I really enjoyed it I think I ended up dropping my rating down to a 3.5 and I'll kind of go more into that now um, but like I said my favorite part was the banter between the characters I thought that was really well done I loved how it was via email via text just in their dialogue I really loved that part and I think that made this book really shine and I always love those type of relationship dynamics um, but for me I dropped it was originally at a four star and I dropped it down to three and a half because again going back to the contrast between kind of the different kind of explicit parts I felt like were a little bit in contrast to the rest of the story in particular and it's kind of told from Red's point of view that was like oh okay um, but it felt like a Sarah J Mass book which is not a bad thing but I felt like it was a little bit different in terms of like the overall feel of the book I felt like overall the book was PG-13 and then those parts came in and then it quickly became R-rated so yeah it took me by surprise but this is an adult romance so I should have seen that coming um, and then the last thing too was just when the characters get into fights like it's very I felt the ending to be very predictable and I feel like a lot of their like problems or source of conflict was their lack of communication so that one was really annoying because I even have in like my reading notes they have like their first fight and then 10 pages later they make up and then they have like their really big fight and it was like resolved in like 15 pages so I felt like that could have been a little bit more fleshed out if it was given more reason than just basic lack of communication I think that would have been a little bit better but overall so far so good I can see why people really like this book I felt like it had good character representation of different backgrounds ethnicities so many different things and then also it had a good betrayal of you know chronic pain and what that kind of entails for someone so I really applaud the book in that sense I was just had a few nitpicky things um, but I flew through this I finished this and like <clears throat> Sorry, I'm losing my voice. I finished this in like like two days, but it was like a half a day of reading. So this is very doable to finish like in one day. Like it's a very easy read. Like you fly through it very quickly. It's a very engaging that way. Um, but now next up, I will be picking up the next one, which is Take a Hint, Danny Brown. So I'll probably, I don't know if I'll get to this today because there's a lot of Olympic things that we we're gonna watch this evening. So. We'll see because that's been the Olympics have been interfering with my reading times, but and I think yeah, this one's around the same page count too, maybe slightly longer, but I don't know why these books are two different sizes. It drives me nuts. Like it's very subtle, like it's like you know, two centimeters, but it irritates me slightly. But um yeah, I'm gonna get hopefully start reading it sometime this week. 
Alrighty guys, so it's been a few days now and I've gotten to page 92 in Take a Hint, Danny Brown. So this is the second book in like the Brown Sisters trilogy. So essentially this one follows Danny, who's Chloe's younger sister. Like there's three, Chloe's the oldest, then it goes Danny, and then it goes Eve. Um, so yeah, that's where we are <laughs> in terms of the sister breakdown. But she is a PhD student and she's very much down on her luck. She got out of a bad relationship where she was like with friends with benefits, but it turned into something else. And she doesn't want to deal with and worry about any relationship. She just wants a friends with benefits type, you know, situation. So she ends up being really good friends with Zaf, who is a security guard at the university and they have like a really good friendship and he's secretly in love with her and he's very much kind of a hopeless romantic and she doesn't want to basically um, commit to anything <laughs> she just wants to you know to sleep with him basically so when there is a emergency drill that goes wrong Zaf ends up rescuing Danny and it becomes viral of him carrying her out of the school building it becomes viral it becomes this big thing and Zaf realizes that this could be an opportunity to get publicity for his charity work that does um, teaches kids skills on social emotional development while also participating in athletic you know endeavors so he's like this is a good opportunity but we're not a couple so they decide to fake date even though he's secretly in love with her and then she's trying to like seduce him so that's where I'm at right now they've kind of made their plan to um kind of start fake dating and so far I think I like this a little bit more than get a life Chloe Brown I think Danny is a little bit more likable I felt Chloe I felt she was just very cold sometimes and I just had a hard time really kind of liking her um I felt she was just kind of like rude and cold and I feel like Danny she does she is kind of arrogant but she is um a little bit more likable and I've never read anything with a fake dating trope but like I said I'm only like a couple pages into the actual fake dating so too it's too soon to call but so far I'm liking this a little bit more than get a life so that's really exciting but I definitely think this weekend I will be able to finish this one up um, today's Thursday so um, I think I'll be able to get a little bit more reading done but definitely I'll be probably finishing this on the weekend I'm a little bit of a time crunch because hopefully we'll be able to go back at the end of August for my cousin's wedding um, so I'm trying to get this video up before then so but luckily this book like the first two books in particular have been very kind of quick reads like I can sit down and be like oh my goodness I've already read like 50 pages I really like her writing style I like the banter that she creates for these characters and I really like Zaf as well I think also what I've noticed with these books too is that she does a really good job at showcasing not only kind of different color relationships in terms of the characters but also kind of representing minorities and other people with disabilities in a respectful manner so I really like that I think that's what makes these books really stand out is that she tackles kind of some of these you know subject matter and like character traits that aren't really necessarily talked about a lot in literature so I really like that but yes so far so good I'm really liking this and I feel like I feel like after I finish this I might become like a romance genre type person like low-key so we'll see alrighty so I'm on page 196 now I've been cruising my way through this book and I actually can officially say now that I like it more than get a life I find the characters just to be a little bit more likable I think Danny's a little bit more interesting and charismatic and so I'm just at the point now they just finished up their radio interview that they did and kind of before that happened um, Zaf had a little bit of a panic attack and he told Danny about his uh, brother and dad passing away in a car accident and how that kind of triggered his kind of leave from 
the spotlight so I thought that was handled very well like Danny handled it very you know like a friend which I like but it's so obvious that they both like each other they just don't want to admit it to each other which I'm really loving like I think I understand why this trope is used like the fake dating trope and then they realize that they do like each other so yeah I'm really liking this so far like I said I really love it so much more and I love how they've made like Zap like a hopeless romantic and there's been many times in like his narration where he's like referring back to his uh, romance books that he's read so I really thought that part was cute so yeah I'm really a big fan of that um but I'm trying to think what else but yeah that's I feel like that's basically all that happened after they officially started to fake date um sorry I just got an email um, but yeah, today I have no plans. This morning I'm giving Tucker a bath, but I definitely feel like I can get very close to finishing this today, which is exciting um, because once I sit down and read, like I'm totally lost in it. So I'm really looking forward to that. Alrighty, so I'm at 320 page mark. I'm almost done, but yeah, I think this one is definitely my favorite thus far in the series and I really love their relationship. Danny finally admitted her kind of feelings to Zaf but that kind of scared her because he was kind of moving a little bit too fast so she kind of pushed away and they are kind of not on speaking terms right now but obviously they're gonna make up and get back together again um but yeah i love their dynamic i love how it was kind of like a slow burn too i feel like with get alive chloe brown it was a little bit more hot and heavy and this one was kind of a little bit more of a slow burn even though they both kind of had feelings for each other it took them for a while to admit their feelings so it was a little bit more natural i think um but yeah definitely really loving this i'm gonna finish this today i know for sure but yeah i just like he, all the support he has like he reads her journal paper she's published he goes and supports her at the panel all that thing and i love how um danny got advice you know to kind of work isn't everything and to put the things that bring you joy first I think was really interesting because she was very much kind of workaholic and just really focused on her work which is not a bad thing but it was taking away the things you know her connections and relationships to the people that she loves around her so I really like that advice and then she's just like I'm gonna totally totally like just tell Zaf how I feel and I loved that scene but now they are not happy with each other but I'm sure within the 40 pages that are left they're gonna make it up so yeah I definitely can't wait to finish this alrighty everyone so last night I ended up finishing take a hint Danny Brown and I gave this one a four out of five stars it was definitely my favorite of it that I've read so far in this series I did find the ending to be obviously I feel like with these the endings are supposed to be predictable but I thought it like flush I thought it was like wrapped up in a very realistic way so I really liked that it was just a lot of fun and like I flew through this book honestly like I honestly read it very very quickly um but yeah I loved Danny's character and her growth and just kind of learning to it's okay to be vulnerable in a relationship and how she kind of figured that out and kind of let her past um, failures with relationship kind of leave them all behind and I love how Zaf is very much in tune with his emotions he doesn't display a lot of toxic masculinity traits he, he talks through his emotion and he isn't ashamed of that so yeah I was very pleased with how it ended like I said it's a little bit on the predictable end but nevertheless I still really liked it and as I said this one's my favorite so he gave this a four out of five stars so yeah, I'm just flying through this trilogy and so today it is Sunday and I think I will pick up the next one which is Act Your Age Eve Brown and um, yeah I'm excited for this one it is a little bit longer than the other ones which is exciting so I'll probably get a good chunk of this done today but I'm excited to dive into this like I honestly didn't read anything on the synopsis or anything so I'm just going into this one blind Alrighty everyone, so I'm at the 150 page mark for Actor Age Eve Brown and 
I feel like this one is my favorite now. Like I'm, I'm like a third of the way through, but this is the one that I am liking the most so far. I think Eve is a little bit more of a likable protagonist in the sense like she doesn't come off as arrogant and entitled. I feel like sometimes Danny and Chloe kind of did. So I feel like she's a little bit more likable. She's a little bit more realistic and we get to hear more about her kind of fears of failure and how that mindset kind of affects how she is but i really love the opening scene where her parents have had enough with her and they're like we're cutting you off from the trust fund you need to have like a job for like in a year and you need to like kind of act your age so she kind of runs off into the countryside and stumbles upon this small little <laughs> bed and breakfast and ends up getting a job as a chef there but she acts so, like the owner does not like her and she accidentally runs him over with the car <laughs> and all that stuff so oh man i love it and i think it's interesting too that the kind of male protagonist in here um his name's jacob yeah yeah jacob um is on the autism spectrum which i think is really interesting as well i really love how she incorporates all kind of diversities and um, make diversifies her characters in a way that it doesn't feel like it's like a diversity hire it feels very natural and it's not like a in your face type of way like it was not there just to make it you know diverse which I think is really good so so far she has just started working there they fell in the pond together but like Jacob kind of likes her even though he doesn't want to admit it to himself and she's just like flustered with him so yeah loving this so far I love the cast of characters I think so far this has been my favorite so maybe I think my favorite trope thus far is like hate to love maybe but we'll see but so far this one has been my favorite Alrighty everyone, so I'm on page 196 and I feel like this, it's a tie between Danny Brown and this one, but this one has definitely become, like I'm really loving it and I think, I feel like the hate to love feels very natural, it's not very overdone, but now we're at the point where they're starting to make me think that they have feelings for each other and all that but I forgot to mention this in the other one but I wrote down this quote because so you could tell that this was written during the pandemic but it was a quote talking about Eve and it said her last boyfriend had believed vaccines were a front for a government tracking system based on injectable microchips so I thought that was very funny but um definitely a sign of the times but I like how she kind of threw that in there um but yeah I like how when they were at the gingerbread like conference thing she stood up for him when someone was making fun of his autism and all that but I feel like the autism is done written in here in a very good way I don't feel like again it doesn't feel like a diversity hire it feels like she's really she really like tried to make it as you know I didn't feel like she was trying to be you know perfect in this and like try to have that you know diversity uh, person but I felt she represents this character in a very realistic and respectful manner which is good but now they're starting to realize that they're having feelings for each other so nothing really too exciting on you know that front has happened yet but um yeah so far so good um i definitely will be finishing it this weekend which is exciting but yeah i really like it so far Alrighty, everyone so i'm on page 315 now and i think i can officially say this one is my favorite of the trilogy so far so we got to the part now they've slept together twice and they have kind of admitted their feelings for each other and it just feels so wholesome and how they both kind of accept each other for the way that they are I really love and they don't try to change each other that way and I feel like they're a little bit better at communicating now because they kind of slept together and then kind of ignored their feelings for each other and they're kind of you know left it all on the table and they're kind of moving on from there so I definitely love this one this one is definitely my favorite I feel like they're I definitely feel like Eve's a little bit more of 
a relatable character like she's not as arrogant as her sisters were like I can connect to her more than I did with like Chloe or Danny and I find she's a little bit more likable <laughs> as well so yeah definitely loving this one I'm gonna finish this today for sure I think I have like 60 pages or so but this is so good there has to be some conflict that comes up and I think it's her gonna be leaving in two weeks to work on that party planning thing and I think that will cause conflict and all these other things but obviously it will be a happy ending I'm you know assuming but yeah so far I've been loving this one I love their relationship they're very cute together I love how they're both really awkward and um but now they've kind of admitted their feelings for each other and I'm just like my heart Alrighty, everyone so last night I ended up finishing Act Your Age Eve Brown and I can officially say now that this is my favorite of like the Brown Sisters trilogy I think Eve like I said before is a little bit more of a likeable I feel like she's more down to earth and she doesn't come off as like as arrogant as Danny and Chloe do sometimes and I felt just she was a little bit more likable and realistic in terms of her struggles um, which I enjoyed as well I was I was right when I said that um, there's gonna be a conflict regarding Eve kind of going back to do her like party planning thing and her family showed up and they were just so mean to Jacob like so mean to Jacob and Eve I was so mad at them and even like her sisters too like oh I'd be so mad but I was so glad that Eve finally stood up to them and kind of you know told them what like stood up for herself and you know she's allowed to make mistakes she's trying to be an adult and make these decisions but she can't do that if they dictate everything she does so I really like how she stood up for herself and Jacob as well and even Jacob was going to go <laughs> and apologize to her and all those things so I feel like their breakup though like this was a common thing and even the other books too like their like breakups only last like literally like 20 pages so I think you know I feel like that could be a little bit more expanded upon in terms of like the length of their breakup like it doesn't happen very long and I felt like overall the books were very formulaic in terms of like the last like I want to say like the last 100 pages or so like when they start to fall in love and then there's some conflict they break up for like 20 pages and then they make up so that was my like complaint overall from a series but overall like I said I've never really read romance as a genre so or like contemporary romance so this was something new and I actually really like these I love how diverse they were in terms of their characters and representations in many different ways and I didn't it didn't feel like it was like a diversity hire I felt like it was very natural she showed these different demographics in a very respectable manner and so yeah overall I really like this series and I'll definitely read anything she picks like she puts out next I really enjoyed her writing I really like her character development and all these things so overall I can see why these books are very well loved so that's it guys thank you guys so much for watching I hope you guys enjoyed this video don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and let me know if you've read this series and what you thought about it and all that fun stuff so yeah thank you you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys next time bye guys